Hey everyone, happy Friday. It is uh, time to do our weekly compilation video. The languages this week were first uh, Galatian, which is a dialect you see um, in Spain. We also had um, Creek, um, one of the Native American languages, and then Cantonese, which is obviously a Chinese uh, dialect, um, you know, two main big linguistic families in China, Mandarin and Cantonese, and, and so we did Cantonese this week, and it's, it's a super cool language to look at. So anyway, our discussion this week was over um, bioidentical hormone therapy, and I thought it was really important to talk about this, almost kind of as a piggyback on to the discussion of cancer um, and hormone therapy, because there's a lot of misinformation about there, or out there about this. There's this lot of um, an idea that if something is in bioidentical, it's inherently safer, um, and and that's not really the case. Um, you know, so I think, like I said, it was really important to really uh, touch on that. So remember that kind of the the big take home message is that bioidentical is a marketing term. It's not a medical one. There is nothing inherently magical about hormones that are bioidentical versus ones that are synthetic. All that means is that the actual hormonal structure is the same as what we would find in our body. Now, you know, if we look across kind of the world of, of you know, medications just in general, there are the, the vast majority of medications are actually derived from some sort of natural substance, whether that's something like aspirin from willow bark, um, you know, insulin or was originally derived from, um, from pigs. Um, you know, there, there's lots of, of different examples, you know, um, uh, you know, foxglove uh, is a flower that, that grows here, in, you know, especially in this part of the country. Um, and, and we get digitalis from that, so which is a medication for heart failure. So there's lots of examples of that. And just like in the natural world, if you eat, you know, too much of a good thing, or, you know, you each were to eat too much willow bark, chew too much on it, you know, you would have issues. That's the same goes with any type of medication. So if it is powerful enough to elicit a response, it is powerful enough to elicit then a negative response or a side effect as well. So that's kind of the big take home. Now, in terms of the hormone world, the issues with bioidentical or the big start of this bioidentical hormone movement really came to fruition after the Women's Health Initiative scare. I talked about that last time, but just quick review. Um, study in late 1990s, early 2000s called the WHI or Women's Health Initiative. They were looking at the use of basically two medications, Primrin, which is a conjugated equine estrogen or synthetic estrogen, um, as well as Primpro, which is a mixture of Primrin and then Provera, which is a medroxyprogesterone or a very large synthetic progestin. Um, and they were looking at those basically in the treatment of hot flashes, vasomotor symptoms, things like that, and postmenopausal women who on average were age 65 and who on average had been more than 10 years postmenopausal. Um, and data was kind of leaked or it w the studies actually were canceled prematurely because they had these kind of adverse outcomes. And this, and before the data really even got processed, was leaked to the media. And they said, oh my gosh, hormones cause cancer, specifically breast cancer. And the thought was that, oh, it was estrogen that was causing breast cancer, specifically in this case, the Primarin. Really kind of the, the, and so that's led to this idea that, oh, since that's synthetic, if we do a bioidentical one, we're not going to have that same risk. So that's kind of the, the background behind that. You know, studies have since come out, multiple studies, showing that it was not anything that had to do actually with the Primera. And actually that actually decreased breast cancer likelihood. Um, it was actually the Prim Pro, and they found further on that it was the Provera in that. Um, now, I had someone ask yesterday, they said they read a study, and they said that the synthetic progestins were more likely to be associated with breast cancer versus a um, kind of an all-natural progestin or a bioidentical progestin. And that's actually true in that case. The Provera is, you know, associated with that slightly higher, but that risk was an extra one out of every thousand women per year would develop breast cancer. That's less than if you had, you know, the rate you would, or your risk of developing breast cancer from smoking. So... Is it higher? I mean, technically, yes. Is it statistically significant? I don't know. Um, you know, but that's that's what the data is. Um, you know, and for that reason, honestly, and really for those of us that do a whole lot of hormone therapy, we're not using Provera in postmenopausal patients, especially for endometrial protection. It, it's a very strong, very big molecule, progestin. Um, you don't really need something that severe on a continual basis. Now, you can use it in what's called long cycle um, hormone therapy. That's fine, but that's a short term dose of it. Um, usually we would use a, a, like a micronized progesterone or a vaginal progesterone, um, still kind of in that natural actual progesterone versus a progestin. 
But anyway, so that's where the whole, the back, you know, story is. Um, so this idea then, this bioidenticals, oh my gosh, they're so much safer and we should all be using those. And that led to this whole multi-billion dollar industry to now to the point, if you go to Google and you type in, how can I become a hormone specialist? You get ad after ad after ad of, you know, come to our weekend course, become a specialist in bioidentical hormone therapy, um, you know, use our patented products, put in our pellets. It's very predatory and it's basically, you know, hormonal deficiency is a very real thing, but it is also a catch-all term. And as someone who does a lot of hormonal medicine, I get patients in here, I get referrals from providers, you know, oh, patients complaining they need hormone therapy because they can't lose weight or they're moody, so they need hormone therapy or their sex drive is low, so they need hormone therapy. You know, hormone, if, if it's not something that we can easily put in a, in, a, in a bubble and say, aha, that's what it is, it obviously has to be hormones. And there's maybe some truth to that, but that's not the whole spiel. You know, you can't just blame everything on hormones. You know, I had a patient um, who, you know, basically was eating at, at a, a buffet type restaurant every day because that was a good bang for, you know, their buck. And they were eating multiple, multiple things a day and they weren't sleeping and they didn't exercise. And, you know, they were saying, well, why can't I lose weight? I must be a hormonal problem. It's like, well, in that case, that that's not really the gist of, of you know, that's not the whole story. Um, so anyway, so with bioidentical hormones, the other thing that a lot of people tag on there is the term compounding. Now, compounding is a process in which a pharmacist takes a medication and or its constituent base. So let's say a, a testosterone. Um, and they take that testosterone and they put it into a form or a medication delivery vector. And they can kind of titrate the amount, they can individualize it, whatever it may be. But it's a, a, you know, you can take what would normally be found in, in let's say, an injection of, uh, and they say, okay, well, I don't want to make it an injection. I want to make it into a cream or I want to make it into a, a, you know, a suppository or whatever it may be. It has nothing to do with the medication itself, I mean, whether it's bioidentical, synthetic, whatever. It is how it is prepared. And there's a lot of mis misinformation. They say, oh my gosh, if I'm compounding this, it must be bioidentical. Well, not necessarily. You can have compounded medic synthetic medications. You know, we take, I used this example before, promethazine, which is a medication that is an anti-nausea, you know, medication. Usually it's formed in a, in a pill or you can get it in a suppository, but you can compound it into a cream so that you don't throw the pill up if you have really bad nausea. That is compounding. It has nothing to do with whether the medication is synthetic or you know, bioidentical. It is how the vector of the medication has changed. Um, the other thing is though, a lot of times you, know, you can get some more unscrupulous, I would say medication suppliers or base hormone suppliers and they'll combine all these things together. And they say here, since I'm a specialist in this bioidentical hormone stuff, I'm going to put it all at this compounding pharmacy and that's why you get these creams that have like four or five different hormones in them and all this stuff together and it's all a big mishmash. And you know, I think personally that's that I have an issue with that because if you have an a, an issue after starting that medication, you don't necessarily know which is the what what is the problem with that because you've just got this big old, you know, ball of, of medication, you know, there. So, um, and if you look at kind of the guidelines, which, you know, if you followed me on this channel, I always talk, you know, try and follow evidence-based guidelines. Different medications work better in different formulations. So like an estradiol, for example, we really want to do that in a transdermal route, whether that's a patch or a cream. Um, there is one vaginal estradiol method um, that will get systemically, it's called a femring, it works really well. Um, you don't really want to do estradiol orally if you can help it. Um, you know, so doing a combined medication, there, there's a medication you can actually still get called Estratest, which is a combination of an oral estradiol and a testosterone. Um, it's got a really interesting story behind it, but part of the issue with Estratest is that testosterone, when it's taken orally, gets broken down really quickly. It doesn't really like our stomach acid and it's not really well absorbed through your, you know, gastric mucosa there. So you don't get as big a bang of your buck for that. Testosterone typically is, um, you know, intramuscularly, like in the form of an injection, or once again, you can do it topically. Uh, progesterone 
intra, you know, I think it's one of the most common ones we see compounded into a cream. It actually has pretty poor bioavailability when you do it transdermally. It's much better taken orally or vaginally as well, kind of through those mucous membranes. But anyway, that's, that's a whole different story. So with bioidentical hormones, remember, like I said, if it is enough to cause an effect, it is enough to cause a side effect. So whether you have a synthetic estradiol or a bioidentical estradiol, it is still plugging those estradiol receptors. And that means then that that's gonna be helpful for hot flashes, night sweats, brain fog, energy, all the stuff that in a menopausal patient you're gonna see are, you know, problematic because those estradiol receptors are not being plugged. It The body doesn't care really whether where it's coming from, it just cares if those receptors are getting plugged. Now. Estradiol, we know, um, does increase the risk for um, blood clots, especially if you take it orally. So, you know, it, it the reason is because that estradiol it reacts in, in your blood vessels, and it kind of kind of can cause a little bit of, of increased inflammation there. You can have clot formation. Also, oral estradiol is broken down into cholesterol, which obviously, as most people know, can clog your arteries, and can you can have issues with that if you have issues with cholesterol already. So. Once again, it, it doesn't matter that how the medication is made if it's causing that effect. If you're taking something, you know, like an over-the-counter menopause supplement like estrovin or some of the things that have more phytoestrogens, like from soy, um, that's the most common one we see, you may not be getting enough of an effect to cause, or enough of, of um, an estrogen base in that compound to cause a, you know, a beneficial effect. Um, and so if that's not the case, if that's the case, you probably don't have to worry about the same type of side effects there. Now, I would argue, why are you taking something if it's not going to do anything? But that's just, you know, my opinion. Uh, progesterone, we see very naturally kind of in the world and in things like Vitex or Chaseberry. Um, a lot of people talk about yam-based, you know, progesterone. And, and yes, once again, those are all, those are phytoest or phytoprogesterones, you know, they're, they're chemical um, you know, derivatives that when you take that food or you take that plant and you break it down, you can isolate that progestin or progesterone in there. And just like, you know, with estrogens, it will have an effect too. If, if it's in high enough quantity, you can get a positive effect. Now, progesterone, you could say, well, what's kind of the negative side effect for that? Well, you can get some moodiness. You can get some fluid retention if you get a deficit of it. Um, you know, progesterone as a gestational hormone to help promote early pregnancy does raise appetite levels. So you can see patients that say that gain weight on it because they're eating more. Um, you know, so that's something you do have to kind of, you know, look into. So the gist of bioidenticals is that if you're going to get a bioidentical, great. There's lots of FDA approved bioidentical hormones out there. You know, if you're going to get a synthetic, okay, that's fine too. Like just know the risks that you're going to take whenever you use a medication. Um, and if you are going to see someone who says, I only prescribe bioidentical hormones because they're safer, they're not following, like they're not up to date with the literature. I'm just going to say it out there. Like the stuff that is compiled annually or by, at least biannually, um, you know, really looking at different hormonal guidelines once again says that, you know, there is really no difference in the safety and how that medication is, bioidentical versus synthetic. Like I said, you want to use proper prescribing, which in the case like with the Provera I was talking about earlier, that's not a good progesterone supplement that you want to be taking every day um, in, a, in a menopausal patient. Like it's, it's too much, it's too much of a dose. Um, same with estrogen, you don't want to put a menopausal patient on birth control, you know, it's too high of a dose. Um, so it, it's, you know, it, it's a proper prescribing there. And I know people will anecdotally say, well, I saw my doctor and you know, my, you know, who in, so had breast cancer and they said it's from that hormone because they were on those hormones and they stopped the hormones and the breast cancer went away. Causality, folks. Um, it's very easy when you have a, you know, an event and you want to say, well, what's causing this to look at correlations there? Like I said, estrogen by itself, especially estradiol by itself, did not increase the rate of breast cancer. You know, if you have a, a patient uh, in their 60s or 70s and they develop breast cancer, I mean, that's roughly, you know, seven, depending on who you look at, 7 to 11 percent of people, you know, will, or of, of women will, you know, develop breast cancer in their lifetime. Like, just because you were on hormones doesn't necessarily increase that risk. Now, like I said, you could argue if you were on, 
you know, hormones and smoking and eating, you know, a really fatty diet and had all these other things and, you know, you get breast cancer. Well, which did it? You, you don't know, you know, but it's easy to blame the hormones when, because that's kind of what we've been instructed to do. But the data once again says that that did not increase the risk. It doesn't matter if it's synthetic or bioidentical. Once again, marketing terms, not medical ones. So anyway, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer them. Otherwise, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week.